Welcome back to another episode. Uh, today I'm going to show you something a little bit more positive than the last few videos I've shown you. I'm very conscious that the last few have been me showing you things not working. Um, so let's try and play some games that I know work. Let's crack on. Okay, a brief update here. Excuse the noise, the case is wide open. Um, I was given a brand new Parallel ATA CD-ROM drive. Um, and so here we are all plugged in and lo and behold we have Wipeout 2097 so view that as icon so yeah CD seems to be working now huzzah! first up is Wipeout uh, you can already see it's installed there but let's give it a go Uh, I'll leave it on the defaults. Uh, I think I discussed last time that um, I couldn't get the Walk 3D driver working on there, so that's something I need to look into. But let's, uh, let's go on a triple buffered screen, 640 by 480. We're only doing it through CPU. Let's try that. Get some volume. Um, I've also got an original CD32 joypad. Uh, so at least it should provide a bit more of a kind of classic PlayStation control scheme. That's assuming that the Amiga CD32 joypad uh, still works correctly, since that's also been in storage for a long period. Um, it has a bit of a rattle to it, so I'm not that. Okay, the start button doesn't work here. Red. Ooh. Okay, I didn't move that left. <laughs> that did it on its own accord. Um, we'll leave it on the defaults, I think. I'm going to turn it up a bit more so get out of the sound of the fan. Oh, well it works. I don't know if I collected that or not. Excuse me. I definitely collected that. Mm. It could be that some of the buttons are misreading here, but you can see it works. Like I said, this isn't through Walk 3D. Uh, it's not going. It's not using the 3DFX um, chip other than for software rendering. So this is just pure power PC horsepower driving this. It does look slightly better when it's done through the 3DFX, done through the Walk 3D API, and you get the hardware acceleration. Yeah, it's not, it's not reading the buttons correctly, is it? At least it's reading the, the main button to accelerate, though, so I've got that going on. Might have to dig out my other CD32 pad, which is upstairs with the, uh, the CD32 itself. We'll see if that functions a bit better. Cool. Okay, well... I may be dead, but the game isn't. Uh, the game works. Um, so, AmiPal dead, game alive, CD32 pad on life support. Now let's give Earth 2140 a go. I need the disc, which is handy since my drive now works. It's just Dig it out. It's an ugly fellow on the front. Pop that in there.
we're through the uh, incredibly long introduction. Um, let's choose a side. I'll we'll go for these guys. And it looks like we are starting with Western Europe. Of course, there seems to be a lot of FMV throughout this game. Might not look good by today's standards, but early 2000s, not too shabby. This is all going through the retargetable graphics, so this is through the uh, Voodoo 3 software mode. Um, and it's PowerPC as well. I mean, the top left of the map is standard RTS fare, really. And you select your units, and you send them off. I think these guys are supposed to be the good guys. Um, they have like the, the humanoid looking um, soldier classes, they have kind of track vehicles. They have less robotic voices than the other side. Um, well, the other side all robotic. You know, you saw in the intro that, that you know it's all kind of like Terminator-esque soldier classes and walkers and uh, lots of red. Not that I think red's evil, but that seems to be the uh, significance in this game. You can see that there's various levels to this game. So, you know, I have to find a ramp down if I want to head down that way. Such as over here. Have I found them? I've found one guy at least. Poor little guy, never stood a chance. Come on team, don't get split up. I'm also aware that I've got loads of troops up top as well, so maybe I'll start heading back so I get the feeling they're going to start tracking me. Let's have a look down here. RTSs have never really worked that well on the Amiga. Um, I think the exceptions are June 2, which worked very well. Um, but as anyone knows, the, the later levels, as, as your the volume of your units increased, it did become a bit slower. Oh, I didn't even attack him. They did that of their own volition. Uh, so, yeah, the various attempts at kind of CNC-esque RTSs over the years. Obviously, June 2 was kind of the prototype for it. It was done by Westwood Studios themselves. Um, then we had Theatre of Death by Psygnosis. Um, that wasn't quite CNC. It was, it was kind of its own thing. drawn forward here. Oh no, what have I done? I think you can run people over in this as well, but uh, I digress. Um, Kick Boom brought out uh, Napalm in the um, early 2000s. I'll, I'll try and find you a date for that and try and put it up on screen. Um, Napalm's very good. Um, that's a, an Amiga exclusive. Uh, again, it's something that needs uh, an enhanced Amiga to truly play it. You need a faster processor, preferably a graphics card, to really take advantage of it. Otherwise, you, you get a very small screen and it is 
very slow. Um, but kudos to them for actually supporting Accelerated Amigas. It was really what needed to be done at the time, and they did it. Run away! <laughs> See if we can get these guys down here. Ah, I seem to have got it done before they even arrived. Let's see if there's any more, any cleaning cleaning up that he's doing. Um, Earth Twenty One Forty was a, a PC game. Um, really kind of cashing in on, on the command and conquer um, bandwagon at the time. There were sequels to it, uh, Earth 2150, um, but that, that never got released on Amiga, this, this, this was the only one that was. Now I'm unsure if the scrolling speed is indicative of just the, the hardware limitation on, on the Amiga version or if there's a setting for it. I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with how it goes, if I'm honest. Sure it's a bit chuddery, but you know, it's kind of human scale, I, I can keep track of what's going on. <laughs> I'm not zooming around, you know, I'm not a power gamer in, in some kind of South Korean um, gaming competition. I really do want to finish this level though. <laughs> Hello! somewhere. No, it's not like they're hiding down there. Let's try and explore a bit more, see if we can get up here. So, we can't get up that way. Let's see what the pathfinding's like. These guys seem to be uh, finding a route, don't they? Aha! Guys, please. Oh no, my units have become completely bogged down. How am I, I going to separate those? I believe you can um, set up groups for your uh, your troops so that you can, you know, kind of have like A group, B group, C group. So you don't have to worry about. Um, just kind of sending the entire army on one route. Um, you know, you, you can separate them, be, be a bit tactical. So yeah, that's Earth 2140. Um, I will stop it there. I'm not really sure what the, can't remember what the victory conditions are for this. Um, so there you go. There's an RTS on the Amiga. Next up is Payback. Uh, Payback, for those who don't remember, um, is a Grand Theft Auto clone um, that was realised on the Amiga back in the early 2000s. Um, it was originally for A1200, A4000. Uh, you kind of need an accelerator in there to really give it a bit of a, a bit more oomph. Um, but it, it, it plays very well. Um, it's a classic top-down GTA look to it. Um, so let's give it a go. I've just set up a um, software renderer screen mode because last time we tried it, it just went to a black screen and didn't do anything. 
I've also disabled hardware rendering because that doesn't seem to be uh, working at the moment. Um, so let's jump in. I'm going to have to stop the monitor to put up that message, aren't I? The hard drive is doing something. It just it decided to uh, flip the screen back to Workbench for some reason. Let's get this cable out of the way. Now I've uh, I've cracked out. Whoa! That didn't sound good, did it? <laughs> I've cracked out the Amiga Kit joystick for this. Um, we won't view the intro again because, uh, well, you saw what just happened. <laughs> it went a bit funny. But yeah, I got these lovely software rendered. Um, icons for it, nice 3D. Um, the game uh, comes on CD and actually has quite a good uh, CD soundtrack with it, but again you have to be able to mix your audio, so uh, although I've got audio out on my CD-ROM drive um, I don't have a mixer for it. Various control schemes available Loads of control schemes available. Um, I didn't type that. Various game modes as well. Um, single player gets you your usual kind of missions from phone boxes, you pick them up, you go and do them. Uh, multiplayer, self explanatory, I think you can do it on the same Amiga. Uh, single player rampage that basically puts you somewhere and you're given some guns and you're let loose. We'll start here. Freedom City! Los Francos City! It's a bit snowy. And then a nighttime level of Corona City. But we'll go Freedom City. It's nothing like Liberty City. It's just loading up. 6.40 by 4.80 might do a bit much, I don't know. Right. For some reason, I can turn right and move forward and backwards, but I can't turn left either on the joystick or on the keyboard. It's going to make the game difficult, isn't it? people over as well. Okay, so the, the software on, render on this is good. Um, you, you get a nice lot of detail. Um, but, I think I may be pushing it with the uh, lack of hardware rendering. I may need to drop this down to 320 by 240. But believe me, on, on Voodoo Warp 3D, it looks immense. 
I just don't understand why I can't turn left either on keyboard or mouse. If if it was just the if it was just the keyboard or just the joystick, I could basically say, right, I think this is what is wrong, but I I can't. I really can't put my finger on it. Turn the graphic options down. So that works a little better, but still, I can't go right. So let's um, let's quit. <laughs> End game. Yes. Right, accelerate, reverse, right, turn left, turn right. I mean, there's nothing in there that says that I shouldn't be able to turn left or right. Maybe it's my keyboard, which I, I, I do actually have a keyboard now, by the way, uh, viewers. Uh, I, I, I didn't have one prior to this, but I finally managed to get hold of a, a, a PS2 keyboard. Aha! Um, which was actually incredibly difficult. Amazingly, it seems as though Amiga keyboards were easier to get hold of than actual PS2 keyboards. Not not PS2, not USB convertible to PS2, but just straight PS2 connected keyboards. Um, I may have to do a bit of a test on this keyboard to make sure it's doing what it should be doing. Let's quit that. Just back in Workbench, um, and I've gone into Edit Pad, just a, a standard little text editor that I think comes with Workbench 3.9. Um, and I, I've tried the different keys on my keyboard. Um, they all equate more or less to what should be on there. Um, got a numeric keypad at the bottom there, and then we've just got the standard one. Uh, this 18 and 0 here is a Euro key on the keyboard. Uh, I'll Probably pop that off because I've got no need for it. But everything else seems to equate. Um, you can see I'm moving left and right and up and down. So why that wasn't actually working with um, payback, I don't know. I've got the input preferences program here, and I've got a, a PC key uh, keyboard type. So that that maps it correctly. Um, I don't have any issue there. So. Anyone's got any ideas why why the joystick and keyboard didn't want to work in payback properly? Um, just uh, drop a comment down there somewhere, please. Thank you. Now let's try the game that effectively uh, moved everyone off of desktop computers onto PCs. This is Doom. Just put it in a standard uh, 320 by 256 screen uh, 256 chunky colours please there it is ultimate doom although it doesn't seem to be rendering properly does it It crashed. <laughs> Don't know why. Um, have some memory dump information. I'm sure that can be useful to somebody. But that is still open in the background. Um, one of the downsides of Amigros is that things can't be cleanly closed once they've crashed. Uh, and that's mainly due to the um, complete lack of memory protection and um, resource tracking. So I'm going to reboot now, uh, and we'll, we'll see if we can try something different. Now, when uh, Doom Source Code was originally released, uh, a multitude of Amiga variants became available. Different people did different things with the source code. 
Um, and so what you just saw there was uh, Zahadum, which is a pretty cool name. <laughs> For you Babylon 5 fans out there. Um, that was a, a specifically a, a PowerPC um, version created. Doom Attack, um, A Doom, there's various other variants, but uh, A Doom was kind of like the main version that was created, while Doom Attack was created to be a bit more um, uh, system friendly with like lower spec Amigas. Um, what I'm going to do here is. Da, 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 320 by 256. So it, it was designed to kind of run on 030 processors or faster. Um, I've, I've selected an 040. Uh, sorry, 040. Oh, right. It's. Um, it didn't want to run. <laughs> Never mind. Well, I've got it running again. I'm not really sure what I did differently this time. Uh, but here we are. Um, it has mouse look as well, which um, is incredibly sensitive. As you can see, I'm, I'm looking all over the place. Um, why did I do that? So we've got slight keyboard control for movement, um, which I've just got set on, on, on the standard cursor keys here. So no WASD, but um, that's you know just what I had it set to like 15 years back. As you can see it runs alright. That's just running on the 68K, so the 68040 that's uh, on my Blizzard Power PC. Um, doesn't, doesn't exactly run as fast as it would have done on a 486DX, but uh, you know, I can play Doom on my Amiga, so yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, I've really got to change that mouse look. This is it's something else that they implemented it through the source code, or you know, what other people implemented was the ability to look up and down. You you didn't used to be able to do that on. Um, there's a door there, isn't there? Yeah. Some armor, super armor. I'm just looking at the ground all the time here. So yeah, this is Doom. Um, I can't remember exactly how far I managed to get through it on the on Doom attack, but uh, you know it's entirely playable. And if you're used to playing like Alien Breathe 3D and, and Gloom and the frame rates you get out of those, then you know Doom at this rate, I'll take that. <laughs> Ta da! Let's try something else. So, next up is the follow up to Doom. I'm not talking about Doom 2, I'm talking about Quake. I'll put it in a low resolution for this and we'll see what happens. There's just the CLI output for the, uh, the pack file. I have the settings put to. <laughs> this seems to be stuck going forwards. I've got a feeling there's an issue with this keyboard. It shouldn't be doing that, should it? I actually have to hold down on the back. And it's still going left as well. Oh, what is wrong with this? If you or any of your friends know what's wrong with this, again, uh, yeah, add a little note for me, please. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I haven't got any of the keyboard or mouse set up correctly here. Um. Yeah, this is Quake. Um, it runs okay on CPU only. This is via the uh, PowerPC. Um, I've got uh, the 68K client as well because Quake was converted by uh, Clickboom, um, who, as I mentioned before, also did the CNC clone Napalm. Um, the 68K one runs okay on the 68040, but you really need no 60, and uh, really you need to be putting it through a JIT compiler uh, on um, WinUAE or something similar to really get any performance out of it. Uh, PowerPC one runs okay, but clearly the uh... oh, there's a dog. Clearly, a GL version work even better. You, you, you can kind of see how. How, uh, how jerky it is. But I'm mostly concerned about why why it's uh, deciding that it's constantly going forwards and. Sideways, that I need to work out why the input, input process is so messed up here. I'll leave them up there because this is, um, I'm just fighting this really. Maybe this is what was wrong with uh, Wipeout as well. Yeah, let's. Uh, Yeah, cause it, it's just put the screen size right down there. But I'm just moving up and down here. Get out of it. And it hasn't given me my mouse back. <laughs> Reboot time. So yeah. About the keyboard, um, I've got a PC keyboard key map in there, um, so that should sort everything else out. And it seems to work fine in Workbench, so I'm not really sure what's going on with games. Uh, like I said, if anyone's got any ideas, uh, if they could put a comment down here somewhere, that would be fantastic. Um, this does still have the standard AT keyboard adapter um, that came with the Power Tower, so it's not a new uh, PS2 adapter. Um, and then I've got a, a, an 80 to PS2 adapter between that and the PS2 keyboard. So, mm, could it be that? Could it be the keyboard? I don't know. I, I was recommended this keyboard uh, as, as working with like a SX32 and other bits and pieces. So, I know it does work with Amigas. Um, just a bit curious as to why it's gone a bit funny with games. I told you it would be positive, didn't I? So we've got uh, Wipeout 2097 working, but uh, the CD32 controller was a bit up the swanny. Um, Earth 3140, that seemed to work fine. No issues with that, so we'll, we'll, we'll class that as working. Uh, Doom worked, although I think I need to tweak the control scheme a bit. Um, although the PAL PC one didn't, so that's kind of a uh, no score draw. Um, and Quake, well, I won't even get started on Quake. Um, I've got some tinkering to do. There are some settings that I need to tweak, um, some searching I need to do online because uh, strangely enough I didn't copy over a lot of the documentation <laughs> for some of the uh, the Doom and Quake clones so um, I'm going to have to look into that. Thanks for watching!